I'm here with Maya, and Maya likes to bark at other dogs on walks. In this video, I'm gonna go over what we call the engage-disengage game. This is a game that you can use to help condition your puppy or your adult dog not to bark at other dogs and eventually to intentionally turn away from them. Now, when I do this, I usually like to do this with a clicker. However, Maya has a really negative association with a clicker, so we're not gonna use that. We're gonna use a marker word instead, and that works just fine. So uh, the new marker word that we're gonna use is BM. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift the camera here in a second, but I'm gonna kind of set it up. So when you do this, you wanna find a situation where you can, uh, an ideal situation is actually be able to control the person, the part that I'm gonna be playing. So you're gonna be with your dog and you like to have somebody else that can play the part of moving around or having a dog on a leash if your dog's reacting to other dogs or whatever the case may be. Now, uh, basically what we wanna do is um, uh, my two tests. Can I get Maya to sit and can I get Maya to take a treat pretty easily? You want to get as close as you can to the stimulus, but not so the dog's barking. If the dog barks or reacts or lunges or growls, you push too far. The whole point of this is we want the dog to feel comfortable in the sitting and create a positive association for the uh, looking at the other dog first and then eventually for looking away from the other dog. So um, if you can't get your dog, you keep on getting closer to the other dog and then every couple steps, ask your dog to stop and sit and then give it a treat. And if it won't sit or won't take a treat, you're too close, you're about to get the barking. So you back up a step or two, Ask the dog to sit, when it sits, give it that treat, and that's the distance that you wanna start. Keep track of the distance that you're far away from. I'm gonna talk about that in the video, but you wanna kinda of keep an idea of what, where you're at, because this is gonna ebb and flow. What other little thing? Um, dogs, we like to talk about um, training the dog that's in front of you, meaning not the individual dog, but where the dog is at that particular point. One day, you might be able to get 10 feet away. The next day, you might have to be 15 feet away. They're gonna ebb and flow. That's not a negative. That doesn't mean the dog is regressing. It's just, uh, regressing. It's just gonna be a back and forth. Okay, so Maya's over here now. We wanna have Maya looking at me, so I'm gonna have you kind of lure Maya around, and you could probably kneel down because of her size, and just uh, kneel down, there you go, and try to lure her on your side so she's on your right or left side looking in my direction. So if you can't go to both knees, That'll be a little easier. And you might just throw a treat over by the, uh, by the uh, uh, yoga mat behind you. There you go. Now, usually I have a dog on a leash, but Maya also doesn't like being on a leash, so we're not going to do that. So try to hold up a treat now while she's looking in my direction. Hold up a treat uh, kind of in between me and her. Make a kissing sound. There you go. Have her sit. Okay. Now we need to have Maya looking at in my direction because I'm going to move. As soon as Maya looks at me, the guardian is going to mark with her word BN and then give the dog a treat. All right, let's try to lure again. There you go. And try to put her sit. There you go. All right. There you go. So I stopped as soon as she marked. So that's why it's helpful to have the other person that's with you. Now I can do this static and I, there you go. So you want to, whatever, whatever movement you have to do, you might have to back it down and go to a lower movement in order to get the dog to look. But again, if the dog barks at all, it's reactive. Uh, it, it, you push too far, you got greedy. Yep. Yep. So you're marking for the look and then the treat is following immediately after. Yep. Okay, so when you're doing this, this is the first stage. Now, right now, she's looking in this direction. Dogs do not generalize well. So eventually, and I can't do it because of the landscape here, but a lot of times we do this outside. Next time I would approach from this angle, then from that angle, then from this angle. So you want to kind of approach the dog at all different angles. And I'm stopping, and usually when I'm doing this, I'm walking towards the dog. Yeah. And I turn and walk away, and they go a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. And you see that you know, what we're doing is called a proceeding. So her looking at me earns her a treat. So there's no reason for her to bark because something good is happening. Now, let's say that I can only get to 10 feet. And if I go past 10 feet, she starts grumbling or she won't take the treat or she gets up out of her sit. She's saying that that is the limit today. I can't go any closer than 10 feet. So I would back up to 12 feet and back up and go to 11. You always want to end on a positive because that's going to be the freshest memory and gram the dog will have, and that's the memory they're going to remember next time you do this activity. Oh, I remember I bark at the person, I get a treat. Okay, so the first stage of this is you're going to do this at maybe 10 feet, and then at 9 feet, 8 feet. And it might take several practice sessions until eventually you can walk all the way up to the dog, and she's just content to sit there. This is the engage part of the game. So we're having her engage with me and getting rewarded for doing it. 
The second stage, and we probably won't be able to achieve it here, so I'll describe it, we'll, but we'll do this. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move, I don't want you to mark until she looks away from me, it looks back at you. Yeah. There you go. So you wanna give the dog up to five seconds to disengage. So first we're just saying, looking at the person is a positive, the person approaching you is a positive. Now we've established helping the dog practice not barking, and we give the dog up to five seconds. So the dog does not, in, within five seconds, I'm gonna have her make the kissing sound. Well, she's doing so well, this is great. Now she's already gotten to know me, so it's a little bit different. You wanna do this ideally with complete strangers she's never met before, but you can also do it with people in your house. So the first stage is you keep on working on this until she's looking at the person, and then and, uh, and you're saying, marking saying the end, and she's looking away. After a while, she'll look, and then look away on her own. That's the disengage part. So the first part, you're marking for the look and then rewarding the dog and gradually collapsing that distance from all the different angles until eventually that person can walk right up to her and she's fine. Then I would go back to like 10 feet. Yeah. And now you see what she's doing. She's being looking away from that is rewarding me. So in her situation, she's reactive to other dogs. So what I would do is I would list the help of your family and friends who have other dogs meet at a park. Don't try to do it in your neighborhood because another dog can come around the corner and you're not going to be able to control that environment. So you want to always control the situation so you can have the dog that's working with you, the helper dog, under your purview. So you say, okay, stop, up, oh, stop, and they stop because they're working with you. And then gradually collapse that distance. Now when you're doing this, don't have Maya meet the helper dog. Once she meets the dog and is comfortable, you can't do this anymore. So you want to keep on keeping that dog in a stranger capacity to gradually collapse that distance. And you want to find a variety of a lot of different dogs. All right, well, this is Maya, and this is uh, how you can play the engage-disengage game to stop a dog from barking at other dogs.